it's without an N. Effects of peak technology. You know, interestingly enough, I think about this almost every day, that how extraordinary and bizarre it is to live in this time being one of the very few generations who will ever experience being in an airplane or antibiotics or watching television or any of the other things that we take absolutely for granted, but are sole, solely the product of this incredibly energy intensive and environmentally destructive way of life. And how, you know, we talk about peak oil, that, you know, oil, they call it production, but I guess it'd really be uh, extraction. Oil extraction, you know, follows the, the curve of you. There's at first they extract a little bit and then they, they extract the easy stuff and it goes on and on. And, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, there's no such thing as peak oil because there's still plenty of shale oil, but shale oil is a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to extract. And there's still ultimately finite amounts of it. And, so they think about, at least some people do think about peak oil, but they don't so often think about peak technology. There's all this talk of how, of, of technology going on an exponential curve, but they don't understand that rabbits on an island with no prey also undergo an exponential curve of growth, but that doesn't mean that it grows forever and bacteria in a petri dish has an exponential growth curve but it doesn't last forever and we understand that with rabbits or bacteria but we don't seem to understand that this technology is all completely reliant on this energy usage and the energy and, and also completely reliant on destroying the natural world it's you know, I was, I don't remember which book, it's probably Dreams. I was thinking about who the real winners of this current and, you know, last few centuries, especially explosion or last couple thousand years explosion, who the real winners are. And yeah, human populations have gone up. But if you really want to see an interesting graph, you would graph the number of machines versus the amount of wildlife. And you'll see that uh, the real winners of all of this are the machines. And of course, we are serving the machines. You know, we, you know we, we've talked about this in many different ways that you, you know, when, you, when a city is designed, is it designed for human beings or is it designed for cars? It's designed for cars. And corporations, you know, I've asked people, does, the United States government or any government take better care of corporations or individual human beings. Nobody ever said individual human beings. Everybody always says it takes better care of corporations and corporations are simply social machines. They're not, they don't even exist for, for real. They're just made up nonsense. And so it really is, uh, machines really are the winners, including social machines. Um, and, and that's not going to last because it is destructive, not only of human community, but of non-human community. You know, my mom died three years ago. And I, I sometimes think that in terms of, I sometimes wonder whether in terms of uh, the comforts or elegancies this way of life brings, if, if she or if I have lived at peak decadence and because um, I mean, Lewis Mumford wrote about this in the fifties and sixties and seventies that, that the, 
the average person living now has a lifestyle, an energy usage lifestyle that would completely blow away the lifestyle of the Roman emperors. We use infinitely more energy than they do, did, um, than any king ever did. And we have more what William Catton called ghost slaves. That's the energy we use. The energy, the average person, I don't remember the number, but it'd be the average person in the United States would have the equivalent of 50, you know, 500 slaves or 50 slaves or something serving them all day long, all night long. That's how many slaves it would take to you know, run electricity producing bicycles to produce just your energy. And the truth is that we're at peak technology and it won't last and we need to recognize that.